week two and are looking at a life of Abraham. We're looking at Abraham's life because Abraham's life is a life of faith. It's a life where God honors Abraham and God blesses Abraham as Abraham lives by what God sees and what Abraham doesn't see. And so we're going to look at that today and look at how that is how some of the things he did and it's going to challenge us to think about some of the things that we do and then we're going to look at a time when Abraham didn't do it quite so well so this story is in Genesis chapter 12 in fact you can read all of Abraham's story in Genesis 12 through Genesis chapter 22 so this story is found in Genesis chapter 12 and if you remember last time Abraham left Ur the city that he grew up in and the city that he had lived in he took his nephew with him and he moved away brand new place brand new experience uh, he didn't know the area he was going to he just knew that God had called him to move away last week I had a dad joke in my presentation and I promised a prize if somebody found it well I didn't get that so this week I'm gonna tell you on the video there's a dad joke in here somewhere and you will find it last week's dad joke was this I drew my little stick figure and I said please pardon my drawing it's a little sketchy all right, so you might need some parent help. We'll find one in here for Abraham today. Hopefully there'll be a dad joke. Let me write my reminder over here, dad joke. All right, so here we go. Abraham's story today. Abraham leaves Ur. He's traveling with Lot, his nephew. He's traveling with all of his animals, and he is moving to a new place. So he has to pack up everything that he owns. All the people that worked for Abraham that were his servants and slaves, they had to go with him. Uh, all of the animals that he owned, they had to go with him. And so while he is traveling, he begins to enact this faith or act upon this faith that he had in God. Now, and let me explain to you. Sometimes people say, well, what they're doing is acting on their faith. For example, an athlete might score a touchdown and point his finger to the sky that, you know, praise God. Or, or uh, somebody may do something and they may uh, point to God as the source of their strength. And that can be an act of faith. But I want to show you how this is so much more than just pointing or making a statement. Because... We're going to look at what Abraham did. So in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 7, and I'm going to read it to you, it says this. Abraham is traveling, and it's in, in verse 6 that he's traveling. And my pages won't turn very well here, but here we go, here we go. There it is. Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moray at Shechem. So evidently this was a well-known landmark. So he leaves Ur, and he travels to this landmark, okay? He has left what he knew. But he's in a different place now. And it says, at that time the Canaanites were in the land. Well, the Canaanites were the people that lived in the land that God promised Abraham would be his one day. So you can see the issue here. Abraham leaves what it was home, okay? And he travels, and he ends up in this place right here called Moray. All right, and there's this great big tree here. All right, and so Abraham travels, and he ends up here. But when you look at the land over here, it's full of houses, it's full of farms, it's full of people. And April, Abraham's just one group of people. He, he just has him and his nephew and his servants. And so I don't know what Abraham's thinking, but I got to think that maybe there's a concern of well, how, how am I going to live down here? But he does something. And this is what I want us to see today. While he is there, it says this. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he's promising Abraham children, and he's saying that his children are going to live in this land. And he says that after that, Abraham built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. So what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about altars. All right. Now, if you grew up in church or you attend church, you might hear this word sometimes. Can you come to the altar? Will you go to the altar? That sort of thing. And in a church, the altar, here comes my sketchy drawing again, is usually just the front of the church. And we call it an altar because it's a designated place to pray. And so sometimes we think, well, all Abraham did was pray. But an altar is more than that, especially in the Old Testament. It had a lot of meaning, it had a lot of energy, and it had a lot of focus behind it. So we're going to look at today how our faith should have energy, focus, and effort behind it. And so an altar would be a pile of stones. What they would do is they would gather a pile of stones. They would pile them up on top of each other. So all these rocks, all these different shapes and sizes, and Abraham is building and piling this thing up. We don't know how big he made it. 
but we could assume that he probably made it at least waist high so he's got it there and then what he would probably do is find some good clay dirt some 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 stuff that would be sticky and he would mix it with some water and then he would kind of pound all that water and clay in the cracks in between it okay kind of making his own cement all right his own concrete to hold that altar together all right you see how he's filling in all those spaces there okay so abraham would build this altar now i want you to think about this this is work okay you got to go find the rocks you got to pick the rocks up you have to carry them you have to find the right kind of dirt you have to mix it with water and you got to pound it in there in all those cracks and crevices so that it doesn't just tumble and roll away it's work another thing that it is it costs time so you got an altar over here you have work and you have time and here's the other one this is the big part of it you got your effort and your energy all right, and think about this. This was before air conditioners. Abraham didn't get to come in in the afternoon and say, my goodness, it was hot, but I'm glad I got this AC. No, he probably came in and drank a warm bowl of camel's milk. Now, y'all think I'm crazy. I said that last week. That's probably what he drank. So he has work in his time effort, and he had all of these things into it. But then Abraham would do something else. He would take an animal, all right, and this is going to be a bad drawing of a sheep. He would take an animal, that's, <laughs> that's really bad, all right, and he would take the animal, and then he would lay the animal on top of the altar, and he would sacrifice the animal to God. Now, I want us to think for a minute why that's so important. Now, we could think that that's mean or that's cruel or whatever, but what was an animal to the people that lived in Abraham's time? Well, let's talk about what it was. Animals were their food. They didn't have a grocery store. They had animals. You would slaughter your own animals and cook them. All right. Animals were also clothing. There was no Walmart or TJ Maxx. After the animal had died, you would take its skin, you would put it and dry it and do all these processing and everything. An animal was clothing. Okay. The third thing is that an animal was oftentimes used as money. Okay because you would trade for it it was it was you didn't have a lot of cash you would have animals and you would do that thing to trade for different things that you needed from other people and they would trade with you all right so abraham would not only put his work his time and his effort into it then he would give something away now i am not saying that what i'm saying that's a lot different than what we talk about today when we talk about going to an altar isn't it we think about just going and kneeling and praying Abraham is talking about a lot of time, effort, energy, and a lot of money. Okay? So he's putting his money and his effort where his mouth is. He says he's following God, and he wants to live a life of faith. So as he's traveling, as he's packing up all these tents, as he's doing all of these difficult things, he's doing this on top of it. He's adding to it, and he's changing it. So he's got his work, his time, his effort, his food, his clothing, and his money all into it. He doesn't just do that one time. He does it again. It tells us there, from then, so he leaves the tree of Moray, all right, and he goes toward the hills. So he travels again. He goes over here towards these hills, all right, and he builds another altar there. And he goes through the process all over again. And you think about that. So Abraham, as he's traveling, he is using his energy, his time, his effort, and his money to show God or to say to God, I believe you are present. And that, guys, is what is faith. All right, so let's talk for just a minute about what that looks like. Let's talk about what it means for us to put our time, our effort, our work, and our money source into serving God. Well, if you're 8, 9, 10, maybe 11 or 12 years old, one of the things you're doing right now is you're in school. You need to learn, right? You need to do what the best you can do with the stuff that's being provided to you. Uh, and let's, let's talk about Awana. Many of you guys are in Awana. We're going to start that back in a couple of weeks. I'm so excited about that. And when you're in Awana, I still quote scripture verses that I memorized when I was your age, when I was 8, 9, 10, and 11 years old. I still quote those memory verses. So don't just play the games. They're a lot of fun. But let's put the energy and effort into learning 
it because God has called us to live a life of faith. And so that's one of the ways we can do it. We can think about the way we, we treat our parents, the way we treat the people around us, the way that we're friends with people, uh, the way we're kind when others mistreat us and stuff. Because right after Abraham did these two things, he made a big mistake. A bad thing happened, and the, the land did not produce crops, and that's called a famine, okay? The land did not produce crops. Well, Abraham was now living this, this traveling lifestyle, and he heads down to the place called Egypt. And when he's traveling to Egypt, he begins to say, I'm a big guy, I got all this extra stuff, and I got a beautiful wife, and I'm going to have problems when I get to Egypt. And so he makes a plan with his wife, Sarah, to lie about their relationship so that he doesn't get in trouble with the king of Egypt. Well, to just tell you really quickly what happens, he goes down there, the king finds out he's lying, kicks him out of the country, gets angry with him, and Abraham abandoned the faith that he had used to build these altars and perform this love and service for God. He abandoned them because he knew what he had to do. And I want you to think about something here. A lot of times we don't apologize when we've done something wrong because we think somebody did something wrong to us. And so we hold back the faith that God's given us to love him and serve him, and we don't apologize. Uh, sometimes we might be worried that we're not going to get a, good, a good, get a good grade on a test. And so we peek over at the person's page next to us just to make sure they answered it the same way we did. Uh, sometimes we know that our parents aren't going to let us have a friend over. They're not going let to us, let us have the time that we want. And so when they ask us, have we completed our chores or something, instead of telling the truth, we, we make up a, a lie or a story that works for us. We use our ability. And when Abraham did that, he abandoned the faith that he had had at these two altars. But he changed his behavior. God gave him grace, and he went back to living a life of faith. And we're going to look at more of that in the future. And I'm going to read the verse that we read last week just to remind us. It's in Hebrews chapter 11. It says, By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place that he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Abraham did these things because he knew that God was the ultimate maker and builder. And in our lives, God is still the ultimate maker and builder, and we can live lives of faith as well. I'll see you guys next week.